Welcome to episode 22 of No BSTS. I'm Jack Harrington, at to her on Twitter. So glad you're here. On this one, we are going to take a deeper look into props. First, I'm going to answer some commonly held questions about how to send set state actions down into props. And then in the second part, we're going to look at detailed HTML props, which is how you extend HTML elements with your own cool components. It's really interesting stuff. Let's get right into it. Now, picking up where we left off, this is our app as it stands. I'm going to go and make a new piece of state, just a basic number and pass it into a component, which is then going to increment it for us. And so that's going to show us how to properly type uh, the set state action as well as use the return type utility type that we learned about before to make it even easier. All right. Let's go and first create our state. Very simple state, call it value and set value. And this is just gonna be a simple number. So in this case, we can just say it's starting off at zero. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so now we wanna create an, an incrementer component. Incrementer, the incrementerist react.function component and it's going to take some stuff but let's get we'll get there in a second and it's going to be a button that's like add I would say maybe having having the number in there so it's going to have a value so I think the value is pretty easy right so value is going to be a number you pretty much know that uh, but what is what are we going to do? Let's, let's also just uh, spread that prop out there. So good so far. What are we going to do about set value? That's kind of interesting, right? Because set value isn't just a function that takes a number. It's actually a function that takes a number, or it takes a function that gets a number and then returns a number. Yeesh. Okay. Well, how do I know that? Well, if I go over here to set value, I can actually see that. Set value is a React dispatch of a React set state action number. Okay. Well, we could actually just do that. So let's go back over here and we'll do react.dispatch, if I recall properly, and then react.set state action with a number. And away we go. Let's try it out. So let's bring down here. Oops, actually, I need to go and add an on click here. which is going to use that set value. To do value plus one. And of course, I got to bring it in there. And always trips me up. Okay, so let's see, let's go down here to incrementer. And I don't know, let's put it below the, the payload. Incrementer value equals value and set value equals set value. All right, let's go over here. And it's pretty small, but let me just blow it up for us. Uh, okay, add, 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 add. And as we can see, it, it works just fine. So this actually works just fine. It's just a little verbose for my particular take on this. And the other thing is that this is actually kind of leaking a little bit of information into this incrementer, like that the value is an actual number. Uh, that's not that bad, but but still, I'm going to give you an alternative if you want using utility types. So let's create a new custom hook. And just to show you how easy custom hooks can be, this is going to be the world's simplest custom hook. It's going to be called use number, and it's going to be a function that returns a use state with a number of a type of number. We can initialize it to zero, but let's make this a really fancy custom hook. And let's take in the initial value too. Initial value is gonna be a number as well. All right, very cool. So now the fun begins. So if I go over here, I could say type use, use number value. We're gonna make two types, one's for the value and one's for the set value. And what we wanna do is we wanna say return type, and then we're gonna put in here our function, use number, but immediately it says, no, 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 I don't like that. So what, what is your problem? Okay, so the problem here is that use number returns to, refers to a value, 
but it's being used as a type. So what we want is we want not the value of use number, which would be the function itself, but we want the type of the function. So we want type of use number. And we'll do a command K command I on this guy. And we can see that now we get a, an array back where the first item type in that array is number. And then the second item is that tricky react dispatch. So if I wanted just the use number value, I could just pull off zero there. And now use number value type is a number. Ta-da! So I can just take that and pop that in there. And then I can make another one, set value, and have that be the second item in the array, or number one. And now I can replace that dispatch, just like that. Ta-da! Okay, so, and does it work? Heck yeah, it works. It's exactly the same thing, honestly. But I think even cooler, if I were to change this out, this number, right, um, then, or this type, to an, a string or whatever, then these would track to that. So when you've got a, a state or a reducer that has an interesting type to it, this makes that uh, a little bit easier because these types are relative to whatever this is. And of course, I think the last part I need to do here is actually use, use number as opposed to use state. And there you go. Not only do you have a custom hook, but you've got all the typing around it. Very cool. All right, now part two of this awesome video is about detailed HTML props. So let's say you're the kind of person where you're on the UI design team of your company and you've been tasked with making the standard button that everybody is going to use in their React app. It's gonna have the, you know, the, the right look and feel. So you're gonna create button and it's going to be a React function component, all right? It's gonna take, take some stuff, I guess, and it's going to return button. And in there you want children, because that's the way the buttons work. And you probably want on click and all that kind of stuff. Well, okay, so children is, is baked into uh, React function components, so that's fine, but you really want to be able to pass on all of the other parts of this and extend it a little bit yourself. So how do you do that? Well, in the description down below, there's a link to this page, it's on Unpackage, but it's basically got all of the intrinsic elements in React. And so that's got all the different basic element types as well as all their properties. So I'm gonna go and copy out the ones for button like that and paste that in there like so. It's, it's really verbose, I get that, but you know, it's, it's worth it. And then over here, I'm gonna say dot, 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 rest. And I'm gonna put all of that in here. So any other parameters that go into button, I want to go into my button. So let's try this out. Do I have some buttons? Sure, I've got a button down here for add to do, that's fine. I use that one. In fact, I can even use that for the incrementer. I'll just move this up above there and then I'll use it for the incrementer as well because this is our new standard button, right? Okay, so let's go back over here. You know, it doesn't really look any different, but let's make it look different. Let's do that. So uh, we'll go and put on a style and we'll say background color is red, uh, color is white, and that's gonna give us some white text on a red background and oh, yeesh, that's nasty. Uh, all right, let's also make it font size, XX large. Oh, well, it's not making it any better. All right, so uh, if I wanted to then allow folks to also add their own styles, which I would override, but only in specific cases, I could also do style in here and then add that in there. And that would just kind of extend on top of the, the, any styles that say, they send me, I'd then put them in there as well. 
But let's say that we I wanted to have like, you can put a child element in there or you can give me a title, which is not a standard button item, but I want that on, on our components. So you can just extend this function component type by saying and, and then putting on there title is a string. And I'm gonna make it optional. And I'm gonna bring it in, props. And in here, I'll just say, hey, if there's a title, use that, or else use children. And then let's see, down here, uh, okay, I could just move this add value into a title. Like that. And give it a dollar there. Okay, cool. And now you can use title as well as children, which is what we do down here with add to do. And that's the way that you take a DSL component and give it all of the traditional props for the element that you're wrapping, but also give it additional props that are custom to whatever you want. All right, well, in the next video, we are going to take a look a little bit deeper into custom hooks and port our to-do reducer into a custom hook to make it a bit more maintainable. Of course, in the meantime, if you like the video, hit that like button, share it with your friends. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button, click on that bell, and you'll be notified the next time a new No BS TS video arrives.